in this video, I want to explain what word to vec is, which is something that, you know, as you start reading about machine learning is something you will definitely encounter and the associated uh, CBAO and skipgram models, which are uh, the two models proposed in the word to vec paper. And, uh, you know, this paper is actually really old, but uh, really influential. And so it's useful and, and you know, important to know about at least. So I will explain it. And then in the next video, I'll also do a, just a quick implementation or a, a illustration of how CBAO looks like uh, in, a, in code, uh, if you want to see how it is in practice. To start with, you know, I need to explain uh, the, the, the idea of embeddings, because really what Word2Vec uh, Word uh, and both of these models, uh, CBAO and SkipGram, uh, try to learn embeddings. So we need to uh, start there. Uh, and what it is um, that embeddings are, are trying to do. Now let's say that you have some, some word, uh, let's say chocolate, and you uh, want to sort of represent this as a vector. Uh, the first idea you might have is to write some one-hot encoding. Uh, and so if you do one-hot encoding of that word, you have some vector of size V, uh, the size of your vocabulary. What you do then is that you put zeros at all the places uh, except of the position of the word chocolate, where you put a one, and then you put zero everywhere else. The problem here, uh, and it might be a good idea to reflect why this is not the best idea uh, or what it is that you're losing uh, by doing this. And so the, the, the idea here is that as a human being, uh, you have some sort of understanding of the world, right? Hopefully, at least, we have some understanding. And the, the understanding that we have is that chocolate is, for example, something you can eat. Uh, it's something that tastes generally pretty good. Uh, it's not something you can drive. It's something that is, you know, we know all sorts of things about chocolate if we try to really uh, analyze it. And so um, as an idea, uh, you might sort of, first of all, you might say like, okay, um, I want to have a representation of chocolate or any word and I might choose that uh, what I want is its edibility, uh, it's healthy, if it's healthy or not, and um, I don't know, if it's a vehicle. <laughs> All right, and then for chocolate in this case, it's going to be, you know, highly edible, 0.99 or something. It's going to be kind of healthy, but maybe not the healthiest, or I guess 0.1 is not that healthy. Depends on if it's dark chocolate. Anyways, and then we have vehicle, which is uh, zero in this case. Now, uh, this is, uh, it gives some sort of representation of what chocolate is. Now, obviously, it's going to be pretty difficult to to say that this is chocolate based on three, these three dimensions. And so, you know, this is not maybe the best embedding space. But nonetheless, you can see the idea here is that uh, we can embed, uh, we can sort of represent the word by a vector represent where each dimension represents some something. Uh, in this case, edibility, healthy, and vehicle. Uh, but uh, what we will do is that we will let the neural network learn this uh, by itself. And so it will come up with its own representation. And we also choose a much, much larger dimension of maybe 100, uh, you know, 100, 200, or, or 300, or something like that. Uh, and we learned that through backpropagation. Hopefully, you have an idea now of what word embeddings uh, and embeddings are. They are essentially trying to learn an embedding for each word uh, in our vocabulary. So each word will have its own, its own vector uh, of representation. What we will get sort of at the end is pretty cool things where we have uh, for example, in the word to vec paper, they said that if we take the embedding of the word king and we subtract uh, the embedding of the word man and we add the embedding of uh, woman and we check what word is closest in this uh, space, we get that this is a uh, queen. So 
it learns some pretty interesting patterns uh, and uh, is able to have some sort of understanding of words. Now, how do they do, or how does a word to vec do this? First, we have the CBAO model, which stands for continuous bag of words. I think the idea here is that in bag of words, you represent a document, for example, by just the unique words, uh, the frequency of the words, uh, uh, and they're discrete. I guess in this, in what we're going to do or look at here is that the, wor the words are represented in a continuous fashion. Uh, but uh, I'm a little bit hesitant of, or I don't really think this is the best word to describe the model. And uh, so I think it's easier just to look at the model itself. So we have, uh, you know, some long documents and uh, word to vec was trained on, I believe, Wikipedia uh, or something like that. So basically, just imagine you have some long document uh, or articles or whatever. But in our example, let's just say we have a sentence. Uh, the, the cat jumped on the table. Then what SIBA will do is it will, uh, first of all, we define some context. Maybe we define it to be two. What we do then is that we start here from at the word jumped and we we uh we have then a context of two so we look at two words uh after it and two words before it so the model will look something like this where we have two words before we have the word itself and then we have two words after we send this into some model like this and we try to output wt which is this in the middle so basically we take in the words to after uh and to before uh, right to before and to after and we try to predict the word in the middle so we have some context and we try to predict that word and then we do that for each word. So then we just uh, move one step ahead and we take context of two, we try to predict it. And th this model here is just uh, basically, first of all, it's a projection layer that takes the sort of the one hot encoding into some continuous vector. And this is the word embedding. And then we have some linear layer that that outputs uh, WT with uh, softmax. So it's a very, very simple model. And all we're trying to do is predict the word in the middle. That's all Vertuvec does. So, you know, the, uh, the prediction task is completely useless, right? Or it's not what's important here. What's important is the representation that is learned from doing this. So uh, that's how CBA works. Uh, there are some details like it didn't, paper didn't use softmax, it used hierarchical softmax and stuff like that. But this is the general idea of what it did. Very simple, uh, but still uh, produced very interesting results at the time. So then we have skipgram. Uh, and this is a uh, very similar in a way, uh, all it or um, sort of the difference is that it, it instead takes just the word in the middle as input and then it tries to predict the words around it. So it sends this to the model and it tries to predict the context words like this. So uh, it's basically the, the opposite of CBAO in a way. Uh, but as you can see, they try to do the same thing and they both learn uh, embeddings and representations. And uh, I think that's all I wanted to, sh to talk about in this video. Hopefully now you have a sense of uh, Word2Vec, what it does, what embeddings are, uh, what CBAO is, and what Skipgram is. And in the next video, uh, I'll implement CBAO and show you uh, uh, an example of how it works. All right, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video.